Hi, and welcome to another little quickie. Now, I haven't been producing many videos because it's summertime up here, and, well, there's a lot to do. Now, I've been getting myself back into shape, and you can see I've lost at least two of my chins, which is great because I'm feeling a lot better. And I'm getting in shape by doing a lot of gardening. It's something that I just love. And I have the room and this, the, the really the lot to do that. So here's a few pictures of that. But I have also been doing a lot of cycling. Now, it was difficult for me to try and get into shape by cycling because it was quite depressing. I just couldn't perform up to a standard that I deemed enjoyable. So I went and did something. I went and equipped my old off-road bike with an electric motor, a hub electric motor, 350 watts with an 11.8 amp battery, battery pack I should say. It's made by Bionics and it is just amazing. It's a power assist or a pedal assist I should say so I can set the amount of assistance that I want. When I'm feeling good, well, I can go straight up without any assistance and go to a level one if there's a good headwind and I'm trying to keep up with my wife who is in very good shape. And if there's a little incline or a more of an incline, I can go up to level two and so on and so forth, so forth, right up to the point where I can use just the motor. I've been doing 50 and 60 kilometer runs uh, and using up only 50% of my battery. And that means that I'm still doing a lot of exercise and I am having a ball. So I haven't been doing many, making many videos. And I won't be in August either because I have uh, travel, I'm traveling for most of the month. But uh, a friend of mine, Emma, Emma Ritson, from down under, under, and it's not summertime at her place, well, asked a question, not to me, but to the machining community in general, and it had to do with measuring angular surfaces. So I thought I'd get this little quickie together to just explain one way of doing it accurately. So, here I have a sketch that's a little difficult to visualize. So here's a few pictures that Emma posted of the part and what needs to be measured. And we can see here with our black outline the shape of the T-nut that we want to produce. Now I have made up these dimensions totally. I mean this is a huge part, one inch, one inch pin. It's just big. And obviously the original T-nut or the T-nut Emma needs to produce isn't this large. But there were no dimensions, so I just sort of made something up. I drew the drawing and then I put dimensions that seemed proportional to the different sizes. The principles that we're going to develop here will apply with any dimension. So, we have our angular surface and I guesstimated it to be around 20 degrees. I'm using a one inch diameter pin that I'm leaning up against that angular surface to be able to measure from the outside of the pin to the back side of the part. Now angles are, angular surfaces are difficult beasts to tame because usually a designer will give you a distance somewhere where the angle starts and the angle. And that makes it complicated because there's no real practical way of saying there's a 20 degree angle that starts at one inch from the back edge of the part. Because there's nothing there to grab onto. We're trying to measure the intersection of two surfaces. And you can't do that. This edge is either going to be rounded off or there's going to be a burr on it. There is no such thing. As a perfect edge. That being said, we want to measure the surface. We don't want to measure the edge, but the surface changes its position in each height from the top of the part because it's an angle. I can't say I'm just going to measure here. No, it doesn't work. 
I have to measure it at a specific position and know what my measurement will be at that position. That's problematic, but it can be resolved with basic trigonometry. So let's get in a little closer and take a look at our part and figure out what the problem is here. So I have here my pin that has a one inch diameter and that means from the outside of the pin to its center well I have a half inch distance. So that's the first part of what I need to measure. The second part that I already know is back here. I have a one inch section here. What I need to know is these two sections here, section A and section B. Now, what I want to do is create a triangle by drawing a line that goes from the center perpendicular, if we can say that, to the surface here. Okay, so perpendicular, and that will create a right angle triangle. Now, I don't need to figure all this triangle out. I just need to figure, figure the A portion of this small rectangle or squared angle or right angle triangle. Because A, I don't know, there's this little bit here that needs to be taken care of and this triangle will give me that dimension. Now once I've figured the hypotenuse of this triangle, I'll be good. So what do I need to do that? I need an angle. I got it, 20 degrees. And I need one side, and I got it down here, from there to there, is half inch, half the diameter of my pin. So I can calculate A with those dimensions. Now, B is the opposite side of this triangle here. See the small right angle triangle there. So to calculate B, again, I need an angle, and I need one side, and I have it. 20 degrees is the angle. And I know that this portion of the triangle that I'm trying to resolve measures 0.8. 1.3 inches minus 0.5 inches will leave me with 0.8. So I can figure out side B here. So let's take a look what needs to be calculated here to figure out A and B. A well, is the hypotenuse of this small triangle. And we can see here that by using cosine, we can say that cosine of 20 degrees, which is our angle, equals 0.5, which is the length of our adjacent side here, divided by hypotenuse, A, which is our unknown. So A equals 0.5 divided by cos 20, a equals 0.5321, 532 thou. B here is the opposite side of a right angle triangle, a 20 degrees right angle triangle. And we know the adjacent side. So we're going to be using tan or tangent to calculate B here by saying tan of 20 degrees equals opposite B, which is what we're looking for, divided by uh, adjacent, which is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 because we have 1.3 minus 0 0.5 and that gives us our 0 0.8. So 10, 20 degrees times 0 0.8 equals B and that means that my short section here, B, is equal to 291 thousandths of an inch. So now all I have to do is add up all my segments. The first part of the cylinder here is 0.5 plus A, plus B, plus the back end here, which is one inch. And that will give me two inches, 323 thousandths. As you can tell, I am too lazy to talk about the 10 thousandths of an inch. So two inches, 323 thou is the measurement you're shooting for if you want to measure this surface accurately with a pin of this diameter. Now, this measurement won't be good for Emma because I invented overall dimensions for my part, but the principle will apply. Now, this can be measured using a micrometer and a direct measurement technique, but more accurate than that would be a comparative measurement using a, a surface plate 
gauge blocks and a dial indicator. Now if you don't know what a direct or comparative measurement is, well maybe you want to check out my uh, metrology course video and uh, learn a little more about accurate measurements. Uh, also of interest here uh, for this uh, question would be to look into trigs and triangles and I have a video for that. Uh, that is if the calculations gave you a few cramps. It would be good to bone up on the trig. And well finally there's a third video that could be of interest here and that is especially if Emma what you want to do here is produce all your T-nuts equally even though that angular surface wouldn't be that accurate and well to get things accurate as far as same on each part well you might want to check out my video on positioning parts using isostatics and that could help out so I hope Emma that this answers your measurement question and resolves your woes uh, and well for everyone else I hope you enjoyed it now I am not going to be producing videos for the rest of the summer so I'm going to be signing out uh, but that doesn't mean that I won't be back I'll be back sometime in September and until then until we meet again we'll have fun and be safe and happy machining.